Thank you very much. We'll turn the music off. Now, I just wanted to get your attention, those of you who are surfing the channels. Try some old rock and roll to get you to pay attention to your dying nation. With the master matador in the White House getting ready to thrust the sword into the heart of the nation. We have an election. Everyone knows what's at stake in this election. Either it's a continuation of stabbing America in the heart and killing it once and for all. And by that I mean not a nation that will no longer be here, but a nation will no longer be here as you know it. Obama has set out to transform America and transform it he has. And unless the madman is stopped, it will be impossible to turn back the tide of insanity. He will commit a suicide for this nation along the lines of what is being done to Germany. And that brings us to Blood in the Water by Michael Savage. That's the theme of today's show, Blood in the Water, Purists versus Pragmatists. You see, there seems to be a frenzy going on in the media. People are becoming hysterical. They're breaking down. You have the schism created by the very wise Hillary Clinton machine, turning the Cruz people against Trump and the Trump people against Cruz. This is a great job and a great victory for Hillary. They have broken the conservative block in half, pitting Trump against Cruz and Cruz against Trump. Some are foolishly calling for a head-on-head -head debate between Cruz and Trump, which, by the way, violates RNC rules for debates in the primaries. But that doesn't seem to stop self-aggrandizing individuals from demanding that we have a gladiator fest where Trump and Cruz fight each other to the death and the injured party goes on to fight Hillary in the final matchup with half a body. That makes great sense if you're actually working for Hillary Clinton. But the bigger issue is the blood in the water and the frenzy that's going on. The frenzy is based upon the fact that Donald Trump is the new gladiator. Actually, he's the knight in shining armor that America has been waiting for forever. He's the man on the white horse. What the media senses right now is that by Fox turning on Trump, they have put a chink in his armor, so to speak. And that's caused a little bit of blood to come out of Trump. And the sharks are going crazy. They smell blood in the water. And they want that wound opened up. They want to see that knight in shining armor on the ground, bleeding to death, vanquished at last by the Democrat, socialist, Islamist media complex. Blood in the water, purists versus pragmatists. The Democrats are laughing because they see the entire Republican Party split in two, with the purists attacking the pragmatists and the pragmatists mocking the purists. Both sides happen to be right. Of course, we would all like a purist candidate to win. However, most every election in the past has been lost on the Republican side by purist candidates who did not appeal to the masses. Or people just sit out the election if the candidates are not pure enough for them. Uh, this is understandable, given what Boehner and McConnell and now Ryan have done to the very voters who put them in power to advance the conservative agenda against the extremist President Obama as he advances toward pure government control over our lives. And then you have the pragmatists on the other side. And I consider myself a pragmatist after seeing what purists have gotten politically, which is near zero. You see, purists have rarely elected anyone, ever, and they will not in 2016. The schism between purists versus pragmatists is equal to the schism even within religions. Whether it's in the Jewish religion where you have the ultra-orthodox purists versus the reform movement and the conservative Jewish movement, uh, Jewish movement, which are the pragmatists, they're the pragmatists who have modified the religion to appeal to a larger mass of people. There's an adage in biology that I learned in high school which goes like this, adapt or die. Either you want to wind up stuck in amber with your purist philosophy, or you want to go on and adapt and evolve. Does this mean that you have to compromise all of your beliefs? No, but it means you have to compromise some of your beliefs. That is true politically, as well as it is with a mate or with a career, adapt or die. Listen to what I just said to you. Adapt or die. That is as true politically as well as it is with a mate or with a career. Adapt or die. There's no room for purists in any sphere of life today. That's a textbook concept. There is a place for purist philosophy, so we know where we come from. But you cannot win a general election in the new America based on a purist philosophy. 
The reason I back Donald Trump personally, as a pragmatist, even though he may be seen as a social liberal to so many purists, is that on so many issues that are fundamentally important to the survival of America, I trust, and I repeat trust, that he will most likely be able to follow through on providing us with the greatest national security. Issues such as defense, border security, immigration, there's no other candidate that can get the job done. Donald's a deal maker. Even if the purest candidate should win, it would not be gridlock in Congress. It would be the end of Congress. There would be no movement whatsoever. There would be a logjam for the next four years. There would be constant partisan warfare. And during this time of the logjam, should the purest candidate win, ISIS would continue to metastasize into a greater cancer. And tens of millions more immigrants would continue to pour in over the border. We cannot afford this logjam. We cannot afford this gridlock. That is why I, Michael Savage, am a pragmatist.